Our last type is a bit complicated. It's the function type. So a function type is basically a variable that stores a function that we would like to call. And this is often used in modular programming, where you can now make a decision which function you like to call separately from where you call this kind of function. And the declaration and definition of the variables is a bit, um, you have to get used to it, I would say. Here's an example. So here we have a func p, which stands for short for function pointer variable. And we have to specify star here. And we have to add it in the brackets. And now this means func p is a variable that is for storing a function that takes two arguments, which are of type integer here, and it returns an integer. So how do we call using such a function pointer a function? Well, we, we put in brackets the variable with a star in front, and then we put down the arguments. So you can compare this to a normal function call. We would say func p for three. Here I have to put the brackets and the star next to it. Here's an example. So imagine I have a function called square func, which takes a double value and it square makes creates the square of it, but casts it as an integer. Okay. So first I declare fpdr to be a variable that which is a function pointer to a function which takes one argument of type double and returns an integer. So this signature here, right, integer as a return type and double as an argument matches exactly our square func here, of course. Now I can assign fptr and it should be, what, what function do we like to call? Well, we want to call square func in this case. So we assign it and now I can call this function, right? So, and that produces the expected output. Um, Non-arguably, the declaration of variables is really not easy to read, right? We had this really strange notation to say fptr is a function pointer. So titles can help a lot here to improve the readability. Um, here we create a new type, which we call n equal func, which then is basically our function that takes one argument and returns an integer. And But now, while well, this is still hard to read, I would you, I hope you agree that it's much easier to say fptr is of type any cool func and we assign it, we assign square func to it. This is actually quite cool because you can have a structure that includes function pointers too. So I can have a struct data set where I have my any cool func as a member and then I store kind of the function that I want to call with it inside. There's also a little bit of syntactic sugar. So far I showed you a bit more complicated calls, which, may, which are more explicit and clear what it does, but a bit harder to read. So as the compiler knows that we deal with function pointers, there's no need to actually use this um, star operator when we call it and the ampersand operator to assign it. So we can just, when we have an FPTR function pointer, we can just assign a function to it and we can call this function as you would normally call here a function called f underscore ptr. The only d problem with that is that when you have a function pointer that is not assigned, well, and you try to call it, then your application crashes. So it's also a really good idea to check what you're doing. And that's personally also why I prefer kind of this notation, because here I will typically check if, if FPTR is set or not.